Welcome back to Chem with Kim. Now, in this session, we're going to be working out question four of the CXC Chemistry Paper 2 from the January 2024 sitting. So let's just get right into it. Figure four are circuit diagrams which shows the apparatus that was used to conduct an investigation to determine which materials are conductors or non-conductors of electricity. So here we have key being used to close this, close the circuit, and we got the lamp to light, to light up. And then over on the right, where wood is being shown as a non-conductor or or an insulator, we did not get the lamp to light up, so nothing was there to carry the current. So we're going to explore and see what it is that's required of us. The following materials were tested, copper coin, plastic, glass, aluminum can. Complete the table below by classifying the materials as conductors or non-conductors. An example has been completed. Alright, so let's see. Copper coin. That is a, um, would be a conductor, very good one. And then we have plastic, which is a non-conductor. Then there's glass, which is also a non-conductor. And then our aluminum can. Which would be a conductor. So just like that, two marks. Part B, figure six shows an electrolytic cell which is used to test a dilute aqueous solution of sodium chloride. Keywords there, dilute. State one way in which the conduction of electricity in the solution of sodium chloride is different from that in the copper coin. So for this one, So in the coin, electrons carry the current, whereas in the solution of NaCl, the ions carry the current in the migrate into the opposite, um, oppositely charged electrodes. Part 2 of B state which electrode in figure 6 is the cathode and which electrode is the anode. So looking back at this figure, the electrode that's connected to the positive terminal is A, which is our anode. So A is the anode and B being connected to the negative terminal is the cathode. So whenever I write anode, I normally put a plus beside it. Whenever I write cathode, put a plus beside it just to help me to remember. So that's part two of B. Part three of B. Write balanced half equations to show the substances produced at the cathode and at the anode. Okay, so A comes before C. So I'll go for the anode. It is dilute sodium chloride solution. So the ions that are competing, well, both chloride ions and OH ions will migrate over to the anode, but the one that will get them, get the go ahead or the one that will be discharged preferentially, the one that requires less energy in this case. So we have our electrochemical series of the anions, carbonate, sulfate, nitrate, chloride, bromide, 
iodide and the hydroxide ion. So once it's dilute, the, the OH, or generally speaking, the ion that is lower in the electrochemical series will, will be liberated preferentially to one that is above it. It's like the reverse of bonding. So OH will be given a nod. So, and this is one of the, probably the only thing or one, one of two things that I ask students to memorize. The, the half equation showing when OH is liberated. So it's four OH minus, that's aqueous, and it's oxidation. So the electrons will be on the right hand side because we're losing electrons and it's, it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive. All right, so this will give us two water, two moles of water, plus a mole of oxygen, which will, well, we won't see, but if we were to test the gas there, it would relight a glowing splint, plus four moles of electrons. And then at the other end now, these electrons are received by our hydrogen. So even though hydrogen, I didn't do a, an electrochemical series for hydrogen even though um well no even though hydrogen would be liberated preferentially it's far 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 lower than sodium so the h plus would be given a nod so these four electrons that were given away are now being um, accepted and that is uh, what reduction is about it's about the gaining of electrons so that's that four marks just like that Part C, calculate the volume of hydrogen produced measured at room temperature and pressure, RTP, during the electrolysis of dilute aqueous sodium chloride if a current of 1.0 amperes was, ampere was used for 30 minutes. And they're telling us the Faraday's um, constant there, 9.65 times 10 to the 4th um, coulombs per mole or 96,500 coulombs per mole, and that the molar volume of a gas at RTP is 24 dm cubed per mole. Now, we need um, something to point us to what, to what we'll be doing. So they want us to calculate the volume of hydrogen. So we're going to be going back to that equation that's at the cathode, where we had 4H plus equals gaining four moles of electrons and forming two moles of hydrogen gas all right so that's what that's what the rule that's what the rule says or that's that's what's guiding us that's the equation all right so let us um put things into perspective and we're going to we're going to calculate how much how much how much um what the quantity of electricity that we have that we have from what they're, they're, they've given us, one ampere for 30 minutes. But um, we're gonna co calculate that, but let's check out what this equation is saying. This equation is saying that four moles of electrons or four times 96,500 coulombs will produce two moles of our gas. We can add some more to it or say this in another way. So we could say four times 96,500 coulombs will produce, and we'll say that is um, 20, 24 times two. So the molar volume is 24 dm cube per mole. So if we're getting two moles, then it's going to be 48 dm cube. And we could have, we could have, we could have made this simpler, but we're just gonna keep it right there. So that's the, that's the value that we have. We can even break this down a little further, but we're gonna, let's put a line here. So let's just resolve what that is on the left-hand side. That's 96,500 times four is 386,000. So we can say 386, thousand coulombs liberate 48 dm cube per mole now that's that's the amount of current that was required to produce two two moles of the gas so let's look at our um our what was given to us 
so we're given one ampere so q equals right so q equals i t i meaning cur current strength in amperes and time is in seconds so we could rewrite this and say q is equal to one ampere times 30 minutes 30 minutes is 30 times 60 which would be 1800 seconds so the quantity of electricity we have is 1800 coulombs so we're going to take this and plug into our our equation all right so back to our um the information we got over this side um we said 386,000 coulombs produce 48 dmq of of hydrogen so if it were if it were 1800 coulombs mm. what volume would, would we be getting so here we're solving for x x is equal to 48 times 1800 divided by 386,000 Which is really eighty six over three eight six one two three and just like that we've come to the end we just scored five marks in quantitative electrolysis which gives us a total of 15 marks now if you find value here please share with a friend don't forget to like the video sharing is caring and remember that chem with chem is your stop for everything chemistry so don't be afraid to book a tutorial session with us so we can help you to concretize that grade one. Couple later.